exhausted. I am continuing in the preservation mode. Summers are very busy on a homestead. Starting from seed, early spring, then planting everything in the garden, and now everything's growing, we need to harvest it, and we need to preserve it. Yes, we're eating and cooking it all the time, and it's wonderful, and we're sharing zucchinis with everybody. You know what I'm talking about when you have abundance of zucchinis. But also, it's a great time to preserve it, because you know my motto, when it's an abundance today, and you have a lot of it today, save and preserve for tomorrow, store away for tomorrow. So today that's exactly what I'm going to do. So there are many ways of preserving zucchini and I know uh, you guys have reached out to me and I listen to you and I hear you when you say you're sick and tired of zucchini. You don't know what to do with them. They grow so fast they, and you already have gifted so many to your neighbors, your friends and your family and you're just running out of ideas. Well, you can cook with it all the time, right? By sauteing, stewing, adding to soups, stews, um, uh, quiches, uh, frittatas, that sort of thing. But you can also eat them fresh. Yes, you can eat them fresh just with some sort of a dip or a, a salad dressing. And they can be eaten that way as well. But you can also preserve them and store them away. They can be frozen, they can be dehydrated, uh, they can be used in other recipes. And I have a couple of recipes where I make zucchini relish and I already have that video posted. I will link, uh, leave a link above and in the description box as well. You can also make zucchini ikra and my family loves zucchini ikra and it's that thick spread that uh, you can serve as an hors d'oeuvre, an appetizer in the winter months on top of bruschetta or on top of any kind of cracker or bread but also it can be served uh, as a um, like a side dish almost next to any kind of protein meat um, uh, chicken or or eggs anything like that so that's also a wonderful recipe and i can leave a link above and in the description as well for you guys to take a look at it's a very easy recipe and very delicious i can promise you but today I am going to can some of my zucchinis and there are a ton of recipes, ton of recipes. And I have tried a couple and I was not impressed. I tried a couple, I was not impressed because all those recipes called for mustard. And in my opinion, my humble opinion of Mama Lil, I'm telling you, I don't like the combination of mustard and zucchinis. Of course, you know, we all have our different tastes, right? So I'm going to respect yours, but I'm not going to make it again. Every year there's something that I will can that because I'm listening to other people's recipes and then I will say, mm, I don't think I'm going to make, be making that again. So now I have a different recipe and I actually like this recipe a lot. So here's the thing. I'm going to be um, first putting all of my ingredients together and I'm gonna can it with some vinegar. So let me show you the things we will need for this recipe. You guys ready? Let's go. Okay, so for this recipe, we're gonna need zucchinis, and obviously I have a ton of zucchinis here. Look how beautiful they are, and I've been picking them every day. They're growing so, so fast. Those that are overgrown, I'm not gonna be using. I'm just gonna be giving them to my animals. But if you don't have these little ones, you can always use your large ones that are overgrown. Just remove the really thick skin if it's too much of it and remove the seeds. But in my case, they're nice and young. So zucchini, fresh zucchini, we're going to need garlic, okay? For each recipe, and it's going to call for four pounds of zucchini. For four pounds of zucchini, I'm going to need a whole head of garlic. It's a big head of garlic right here for each recipe, okay? And for each recipe, it's also going to call for a large bunch of fresh dill. Unfortunately, all my dill is overgrown and went into seed, so I ended up buying some. And this is an over large big bunch, so um, I didn't weigh it, uh, but I'm going to say a good sized bunch per recipe, okay? And then a one bunch of fresh parsley. Okay, my also overgrown, so I ended up buying it. Then we're gonna need white sugar, and for each recipe, for I mean, for um, for each four pounds of zucchini, we're going to need three fourths of a cup of white sugar, four tablespoons of salt. I got my salt here. 
I'm gonna need one tablespoon of crushed um, fresh black pepper and I'm gonna need vinegar. So this is a Russian recipe and for most Russian recipes we use 9% vinegar, okay, 9% vinegar. But I couldn't find 9% um, vinegar here in the US. Um, the most I could find was 5% acidity. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And because of that, I had to adjust this recipe to meet this kind of vinegar. So 5% vinegar, white vinegar, we're gonna need one cup, one cup of vinegar, okay? And guess what, that's it. So I'm gonna read it one more time. Zucchini, four pounds. Um, garlic, one head, vinegar, 9%, 250 ml or one cup, white sugar, three-fourths of a cup, salt, four tablespoons, black pepper, one tablespoon, a bunch of dill, and a bunch of parsley. All right, so let's start cooking. All right, so what I'm just going to, uh, these are washed zucchinis, and I'm just cutting off the heads and the tails, okay? And I'm gonna slice them into half circles. So cut across just like this. It will be easier to lay them down and cut them in circles. And now how big of a circles? The circle should be about one third of an inch. If you're doing metric system, it should be about one centimeter size, okay? Because if they are too small, so what's gonna happen is that they're gonna fall apart. So I'm just placing everything in a large container. And I have a large container of a pot or a bowl or whatever is easier for you. So I'm just dumping it into a container. So this is gonna take me a while to chop all of these, okay? But it's not time consuming, it's just, you know, something to do. Um, so I'm just gonna chop everything, okay? And I'll show you what I'm gonna do after. Okay, so I'm cutting off the the large stems from from the dill because I don't want a lot of stems. I'm just gonna keep the um, the foliage itself, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing with with parsley. I'm just gonna keep the leaves because I don't know, don't want to have so many stems in my in my zucchinis. All right, so there'll be a lot of chopping for me to do right now. So I think to simplify everything, I'm gonna put the garlic with my greens into the food processor and just spin everything and it will be chopped in no time. All right, so all of my zucchinis are cut up here and I have a couple of batches here, so I will be adding more than required. But just I'm gonna start by putting some sugar, okay? I'm gonna put the salt that I need Okay, and I'm gonna add my, I ended up putting the vinegar in here because he didn't wanna spin without it. <laughs> it was too much of greenery. So I ended up putting the vinegar in here to spin everything together. And this has garlic and it has all the herbs. Now, if you don't have a food processor, this could be, you know, cut by hand into very small, small, small pieces, the smallest you can. But in my case, just to speed up the process, I just put it in the food processor. And the vinegar is already here, one cup of vinegar. So now I'm going to mix everything together, okay? Mix everything together. So everything is coated, all the zucchini is coated with sugar, with salt, with vinegar and spices, I mean these herbs. What I did not add, oh, I forgot, black pepper. Give me a second. All right, so here's my black pepper, one tablespoon per one batch. All right, stir everything together. Okay, so all my spices, all my salts and sugars and all the herbs are here and the garlic. So I stirred everything together. I'm gonna put a cover on and I'm going to let it rest for 15 minutes. So 
So now it's going to rest for 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, I'm gonna set the timer. I'm going to stir it up again all together and let it rest for another 15 minutes. And then again, I'm gonna stir it all together and let it rest for 15 minutes. And I'm gonna do that four times, total of one hour. And what it will do is that the sugar and the salt will withdraw some of the liquid uh, from the zucchinis by osmosis creating a lot of juice okay because no water will be added to this recipe at all and after stirring four times one hour will pass and I'll show you what I'm gonna do all right so look all this time has passed and look at all these juices that have been released from my zucchinis wow I mean I know I added some vinegar but not as much do you see all this beautiful liquid yeah and it has a beautiful beautiful aroma so this is going to be a little bit on a zesty uh, not very spicy but definitely a little bit of a zesty and exotic taste to this zucchini so it's going to be unusual taste all right so it's already in the large pot where i was holding it i put it on the stove and i'm going to turn the heat on i'm going to turn the heat on and i'm going to bring it to a boil as soon as i see bubbles the little bubbles coming through on the sides uh, in a liquid i'm gonna set my timer and no more than 10 minutes because i don't want them to turn into mush okay i want them to hold their shape as much as possible all right so i'm gonna cook them no more than 10 minutes in the meanwhile i've gotta get my uh, jars washed and sterilized and i'm gonna be using quartz but pines can be used as well but i just only have quartz available why because they are jar shortage in our country just like other shortages but yes that's another shortage all right friends so let's just this come to a boil all right i see first bubbles coming it's beginning to boil so i'm going to stir it gently and i'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes because again i don't want to overcook this uh, I'm just trying to get them a little bit soft and get ready for the water bath canner. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna stir this one more time and now I'm just gonna start putting them all into my sterilized jars and my jars are very hot. I just sterilized them. Okay, so, so how much to fill up? Okay, so that's kind of um, thing that we need to remember that I'm gonna push them as much as possible in there, okay? Because why? They're still going to shrink a little bit while they are processing in um, in the water bath canner. Okay, so I'm gonna try to put as much as possible in there. All right, and I'm actually gonna take a little spoon and like literally push them a little bit in there, okay? The little spoon, oh, you can't see it. Let me put that camera down, all right. So I'm literally gonna push them in the jar and fill up more, okay? Any remaining liquid that will be in the pot, I'm actually going to um, add to all, see how I just filled up? I'm actually gonna add a little bit more. Probably like with a half an inch of headspace and that's it, okay? And let's fill up the next one. I already have my covers and the rings ready. I wash them, but it's no longer recommended to boil them like in the old days. But for some reason, I still like to cover them with hot water, like boiling water, just not to boil them, but just to soften them up a little bit because it's easier to get the rings on and everything when they're a little bit softer, okay? I find that the seal is a little bit better. So all I'm doing, I'm just pushing them in a little bit. So I've tasted uh, the zucchini already, and yes, it's definitely a little zesty because of all that garlic that we put in. And you guys remember, for each uh, batch, it required a lot of garlic. All right, so, and vinegar definitely made it more zesty. It's gonna be a perfect side dish for um, any any dinner really so for example if you cook some chicken and rice you know open a jar of these zucchinis and serve it for dinner okay or you made um plain 
you know, a sunny side up eggs, you can put a few of this on the side as well. It's going to be a very good addition. Simple mashed potatoes and, um, and turkey dinner. Also, this will make a nice zesty addition to any, any dish, any dinner. All right, I'm just going to push them down a little bit more. And now all I'm just going to do is just I'm going to take this liquid that I have left over and I'm going to try to uh, fill up all of my jars so they all have enough liquid in all of these jars. Hopefully I'll have enough. So this is a Russian recipe, but I have um, adopted it to make it more of American style using American measurements and using um, American style vinegar, but it's gonna be a delicious, delicious recipe to serve to your family in the winter months. So as always, I have a little, my fake little debobbler. I don't have a real debobbler and I'm just gonna run along the sides to help uh, a lot of those bubbles to escape if possible, okay? And I'm going to wipe the rims, which I always do, with a little bit of vinegar uh, soaked on the paper towel. It's gonna help to, um, just to clean the edges and making sure that um, it will provide a good seal. And I'm gonna water bath process them. If this were pints, pints are good for 10 minutes, what are processing, but uh, quartz, 15 minutes. I'm just gonna take a little paper towel and run on the edge. Make sure the edges are nice and clean. I have to, you know, I wish I had pints for this recipe because it's more convenient to open a pint um, of zucchinis because it's not the main dish, it's not the main thing, it's a side. So uh, a pint probably would have been better, but I there are no pine jars available in the stores and I don't have any more pints left. So I have to do what I, ha what I have. So I used, um, how many batches? I had two and a half batches here. So uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six jars of, um, of quartz. All right, it's time yeah. for water bath canning. Okay, so water bath, make sure that it's already boiling, which it is. And all I'm gonna be doing is just gonna be putting my jars in there. I probably should use my jar lifter upper. So uh, someone asked me how tight the lids have to be on and all of the recommendations say finger tight. So I know that my husband's finger tight is much tighter than my finger tight. <laughs> but I still know that it's uh, finger tight, not overly tight. Okay, and it's very important that the water covers on the top and at least an inch on top of the jars. So the jars are completely under the water. So I'm gonna put a cover on and I'm gonna wait for the water to come back to boil. And as soon as it comes back to, to boil, I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. This is an old pot. All right. Okay, so while the water bath canner is going, I just wanted to give it a taste. So I just grabbed a couple from the jar that we're not going to seal and we're gonna serve it for dinner tonight. And I already tasted one, I have to say, I like it. Uh, it's a little zesty. I definitely taste garlic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, very fragrant because it has a lot of herbs. I still feel a little bit of a crunch and bite, but remember, these were not processed in a water bath canner. Those that will be processed, they'll be a little bit more softer. Definitely zesty. I taste that vinegar. So, um, it's gonna be perfect as a side to any kind of plain and bland food such as, I don't know, white rice or, or plain mashed potatoes or something because this definitely has zest. And something else I wanted to point out, that this juice, the brine or whatever you wanna call it from uh, these pickles can be used later in the winter to marinate meat because it has vinegar, it has garlic, 
it has a lot of herbs so if you are um, straining it or something to serve for dinner remember you can use this brine this marinade to marinate the meat as well so you're killing two birds with one stone right so friends I hope you're encouraged to uh, store away some food for the winter months you never know what's coming including zucchini so friends be encouraged and try something new.